Okay, so in this video, we will cover the so-called Chebyshev's theorem. So here's the setup, and this setup will illustrate what is the philosophy behind statistics. The idea is we want to extract information about an entire population. So suppose that we have a population, and I'll draw our entire population as a kind of an egg, but think of it as a region. So we think of this being our entire population. And now we would like to say something about the entire population, but this is very often not feasible. If you have a very large population, sampling every subject of your population may not be possible, so you have to fall back on taking a subset of your population, a much smaller set but then that is manageable. So you take a subset of your population, and that of course is what we call a sample. So you may have a population of a billion subjects, and you may choose a sample only a few thousands, for example. Now the question is, once we have our sample values, can we extract, and this is the fundamental goal of statistics, once we have information about a sample from a population, can we extract a statement from the sample that is now about the entire population? And Chebyshev's theorem will be an example of that. So we have our sample. So of course, the first thing we do is, every time we have a sample, we compute our sample mean and our sample standard deviation. So suppose we have here n sampled subjects and we obtain n numerical values. So x1 will be our first value, x2 our second value, up to xn our nth value. So here of course n is the sample size. So we compute our sample mean x bar. If you remember all that is is the average and so we add all of our sampled values and we divide by our sample size. We can write this more concisely using our sigma notation. So what we have on the numerator is the sum of all the x values. So we can simply write the upper Greek letter S for sum, sigma, and we're saying we're summing all the x values, so sigma x over n. Compute this and you have your sample average. And of course we also need the sample standard deviation. Well first, find the sample variance. And here I'll use the shorthand notation. So we would then take each value of our sample, x1 through xn, subtract the average, square this, and add all of those. So you do x1 minus the average squared, plus x2 minus the average squared, and so forth, up to xn minus the average squared. We have to add those up and divide, and if you remember, we have to be careful. We do not divide the sample variance by n, but by n minus 1. Once we have the sample variance, of course we want the sample standard deviation, which is simply the square root of the variance. Okay, so all of this right now is information about the sample, not about the entire population. How do we then go from this information, which is only about our sample, a much smaller subset of the entire population, to a statement about the whole population? Well, here is Shebyshev's statement. We have one parameter, which is k, which is any positive real number. So we let k be some positive real number, and here's the conclusion. The interval and here's how we construct the interval. So we have this value of k. The left-hand point is the sample mean minus k times the sample standard deviation. The right-hand point is the sample mean plus k times the sample standard deviation. This is our interval. And this interval will contain
and the keyword here is approximately. As this is information about the sample, we can't say anything that is exact about the population as we're missing a lot of data. We'll contain approximately. At least, so at least, the following percentage. So 1 minus 1 over k squared times 100%. So here's our percentage. So th this interval will contain approximately at least this percentage of all the population. The population, of course, is whatever values you're measuring. You could ask, of course, consider a population of people, and you could ask them, say, their age. And so the population would consist of a number, a set of numbers, where the number gives you the age of a person. And you can appreciate why this is interesting. We take a much smaller set than the entire population, called our sample, we compute the sample mean and the sample standard deviation, so information only about a small portion of the entire population, and our conclusion is that this interval will contain at least approximately this percentage of all the population values. So in the end we have a conclusion that is about the entire set of population values, not only about our much smaller subset being our sample. And that's Chebyshev's theorem. Let's consider now a, an example to appreciate how this works and what the conclusion again is saying. Usually, here I've said, well, pick a k, here's a conclusion. Usually, once we take our sample, we will want to prescribe a given percentage. You may want your conclusion to be about at least 50% of the population or 80% of the population. So you will choose your percentage. From this you'll be able to solve for your k and once you have solved for your k then you can construct your interval. So let's do an example. So suppose that we have the following situation. Suppose that we sample from the college 12 students. So our sample size is 12 students. And we ask each student how much time it takes them to get to the college in the morning. So from the time that they leave their home until they get to the college, how long does that take them? So suppose we sample only 12 students, right? So here our population would be the entire population of the college, roughly a thousand people, but now we only sample 12 people out of a thousand people, so a much smaller collection than the whole population. Suppose we obtain the following values. The first person sets five minutes, and suppose that the values are ordered, so five minutes, eight, ten, twelve, twelve, seventeen, twenty-three, 24, 25, 29, 33, and 36 minutes. Okay. Well, we'll break this up into two parts. We'll use, in each example, a different percentage. Well, before we go on and discuss the percentage, we need first our sample mean and our sample deviation. And we'll leave the calculations up to you, but finding your sample mean, adding up all the values, dividing by the number of values of your sample, 12, you'll find an exact sample mean of 19.5 minutes. Then, find your sample variance first, so do each value of your sample minus the sample mean, square this, add all those up, and divide, be careful, not by 
12 by 11, you will find an exact sample variance of 11.59 over 11. And now we want from this our sample deviation. So S, of course, will be the square root of the variance. 11.59 over 11. This you can round up. And we'll round up to our third decimal place. This will be approximately 10.265. So this is your approximate standard deviation from your sample of 12 values. Okay, so now we can move ahead. We have these statistics. Part A. So we will use here Shebyshev's theorem to construct an interval that will contain approximately at least, say, 60% of all possible times given by students from the whole college. So he was prescribing a percentage. We want our percentage, 1 minus 1 over k squared, times 100%, to be equal to 60%. And you see at this point, to construct the interval, we need x bar, s and k. We already have x bar and s. All we're missing is k. But by prescribing a given percentage in this equality, this being the percentage for any choice of k, well we have an equation and the only unknown is k, so by solving k in this equation we will then be able to construct our interval. Well, we want to isolate k, so divide both sides by a hundred percent. These will cancel. 60% over 100 percent is 0 0.6. So now we have 1 minus 1 over k squared is 0 0.6. Well, I will send this term to the right and the 0 0.6 to the left, which will give me 1 minus 0 0.6 equals 1 over k squared. Well, 1 minus 0 0.6, that is 0 0.4. Now, I have 0 0.4 is 1 over k squared. I would like my k to be on top. So what I'll do next is I'll invert both sides. So 1 over 0 0.4 will be equal to 1 over 1 over k squared, which is k squared. If you calculate 1 over 0 0.4, or if you think of it, this is 4 over 10. So 1 over it will be 10 over 4. Cancel the 2. This is 5 over 2, which is 2.5. And now k squared is 2.5. Well, if you want to solve for k, take the square root on both sides. And so k will be the square root of 2.5. If you want an approximate value, again, we'll round up to the third decimal place, and you'll have k that is approximately 1.581. And now we're good to go. With this choice of k, our percentage will be 60%, and so we'll have the desired conclusion. So again, now you just plug this in. The left hand point is x bar 19.5 minus k 1.581 times s 10.265, that is your left hand point. Do the same thing for the right hand point. I will leave the calculations up to you, and you will find the following interval from 3. 27 minutes, running up here to the second decimal place to 35.73 minutes. So by Chevyshev's theorem, this interval will contain again I'll be lazy here, approximately at least and I'll just write this, approximately at least 60% of all population values. So if you think of why this is neat, we sampled only 12 students, and from those 12 students, applying Chebyshev's theorem, we can say, because we're talking about here the entire population, if we were, say, 
to sample every student at the college, so those thousand students, we would be approximately, we could say that approximately 60% of all the values obtained from the whole college will fall inside this interval. So roughly 60% of all students will need roughly between 3 and 36 minutes to get to school in the morning. And this is why this is a neat conclusion, because we're no longer talking about just the 12 students, but about the entire student population. So let's look at a second example. And the only difference is we'll change our percentage from 60 to 75 percent. And you may ask, even before we do calculations, will the new interval be smaller or larger? Well, if we're going to go from 60 to 75 percent, our interval will contain more values, 15% more, so it should be a little bigger. And this is what's going to happen. And there's an additional twist. And we'll see this once we carry out the calculations. So all we need now is to find our value of k, given this new percentage. And you will see sometimes that you have to be careful when you write your conclusion to make sure it makes sense given the context of the situation. So here's B. Now we want a percentage, which we're told by Chebyshev's theorem, is given by 1 minus 1 over k squared times 100%. We want this to be equal to now 75%. Well, then we can solve for k as we did previously, divide by 100% both sides. This gives you 0 0.75. So you have 1 minus 1 over k squared is 0 0.75. Send this term on the right, it becomes positive. Send 0.75 on the left, it becomes negative. So you have 1 minus 0 0.75 equals 1 over k squared. But 1 minus 0 0.75 is 0.25. So now you have 1 over k squared is 0.25. You keep going here. Well, you want the k on top, so you invert both sides. So 1 over 0 0.25. This is equal to 4. Will equal 1 over 1 over k squared, which is k squared. So k squared equals 4 to solve for k. Take the square root on both sides. But the root of 4 is exactly here, 2. So k equals 2. Let's recall that we had a sample mean of 19.5 and a sample deviation approximately of 10.265. And now we have our three ingredients so we can construct the interval given by Chebyshev's theorem. If you recall, the left end point x bar minus ks, right end point x bar plus ks. I will leave these calculations up to you, and if you do so, you will find the following interval from negative 1.03 up to 40.03. Now, this is our conclusion. So this interval, by Chebyshev's theorem, will contain approximately at least 75% of all the population values. But you always have to ask when you find the final answer from the mathematical procedure if the answer is consistent with the reality of the situation. Well, what kind of values were we recording? They were times, right? And you can't have negative times. So if you think of it, the mathematical solution gives an interval from negative 1.03 to 40.03. But in the context of the problem, since we're gathering values that are times, we cannot accept negative values. So we have to reject this part of our mathematical solution and give an answer that in the end agrees with the reality of the situation. So our interval will be rejecting the negative values, start from 0, up to 40.03.
40.03 minutes. And this is now our conclusion. So always be careful that when you state your conclusion that it is consistent with the reality of the problem. And our conclusion is that this interval will contain, by Shebyshev's theorem, and again here I'll be lazy, approximately at least 75% of all population values. Again, approximately. So, if you think of why again this is neat, all we had was information about a sample of only 12 students, but from Shebyshev's theorem, our conclusion is that if you were to sample the entire student population and ask them how long does it take them to get to school in the morning, you would be roughly guaranteed that 75% of the times gathered will lie somewhere between 0 and 40 minutes. And that's it. And this is really the core of what statistics is. The idea of using information about a sample of a population, so a really small portion, subset of the entire population, to then extract a conclusion that is not about the subset only, but about the entire population. Later on, we will see much more accurate and much more sophisticated methods of forming such statements. But this is a little later on in the course.